Dog on Wall Street is in the house talking about efforts to keep struggling homeowners in their homes. Chris Markowski, the Watchdog on Wall Street, in the house to talk about the latest efforts to uh, shore up the foreclosure. Thanks, guys. A brand new report shows Florida, California, Arizona, and Nevada are taking the biggest beating when it comes to home foreclosures. But word has it the Treasury Department may give banks and investors billions more dollars in incentives to help refinance mortgages. The Watchdog on Wall Street, Chris Markowski, joins us now to talk about what that could all mean. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. I live in Florida and so do you. Are we screwed? <laughs> We're in one of the four states. I guess it's a function of like uh, how much you've got in your house and how much equity it is. It's, it's all, you know, up in the air. I can tell you this much, the house next door to mine was an investment property by somebody and the pool looks like uh, a swamp. You yeah, know, it's, you know, something you want to let the guy, what's Bill Murray from uh, Stripes swim in rather than the right. real pool. But uh, neither here nor <laughs> Pond's there. good for you. <laughs> Pond's good for you. But neither, it, it's a problem because it's just it, Econ 101. There's too much of a supply of houses out there. Yeah. And there was a great article yesterday, a great piece yesterday in the New York Times about certain cities, municipalities around the country actually downsizing. And Flint, Flint Michigan. Michigan. Yeah, exactly. They're saying, you know what, we're going to start knocking down some houses. My housing plan was to say, okay, let's invest in bulldozers and wrecking balls and take the inventory down. Now, many of your, your listeners, watchers here on the program, I get emails from all week long. The website to find out if you're eligible for refis or any government money is makinghomesaffordable.gov. Makinghomesaffordable.gov. I think I wrote that, that website maybe about a thousand times this past week to people. That's whether or not you're going to qualify to get some of this money. Yeah. Now, one of the things that the Treasury is talking about, though, is making it easier uh, for the second lien uh, loan companies. Oh, no, no, uh, they're, they're talking about injecting billions of dollars into that to, to free up those second mortgages, but uh, my understanding, again, Econ 101, is that the second lien holder is subordinate to the assets to the first, you know, to the primary lender. That's not going to happen. Okay, a lot of things get tossed out there. It's not going to happen because it can completely throw the whole capitalism thing into disarray. You can't allow, you can't let somebody, ref you know, basically a, a guy who's got a second lien on a mortgage uh, precedent over the person that actually wrote the mortgage. Right. There's like a, even if you talk about a company, there's a pecking order. There, there's creditors, preferred stock, and then shareholders in regards to a liquidation and who gets paid what at what time. If they do this, it's going to just throw everything into disarray. Wow. Okay, uh, and quickly, um, you know, if this is not the way then to throw billions more out of this mess, then, then what we need to do, you're saying, is just lower down the inventory. I, I, there's too much inventory out there. I mean, there's, there's, yesterday they had Richard LaFrac came out and said he's a big real estate guy around the country. So we got over 2 million extra units out there that are not available. Get rid of the inventory, we'll be in a much better position. Yeah, okay. President right, thanks, Barack Obama and one of his top economic advisors are heading up a White House meeting today with the execs of major credit card companies. The goal to crack down on shady business like raising interest rates and sneaking in those extra fees. So while they have their talks, we are going to help you get a head start on getting your finances under control on your own today. So joining us is the watchdog on Wall Street, Mr. Chris Markowski, and Pamela Gillen. She is the author of the book Bank on Yourself. Welcome, you two. Pleasure. Okay, first up, how can we protect ourselves from the credit card companies? Pamela, I'll start with you. At the credit card companies have way too much power over us. They can raise the rates, they can change the rules, they can freeze your account, they can say, you know what, that $15,000 credit that you had, oh, now you're down to $5,000, and we're gonna start charging you extra interest on the, on, on, the, on the additional amount. They can basically change the rules any way they want, any time they want. That is not fair, and we actually recommend that people become their own source of financing because I'm dead set against any kind of outside financing. So we teach people how to become their own source of financing and that way they can eliminate banks and credit card companies and finance companies from their life altogether. You don't even have to go to a, a, a finance company to, to take out a loan. You, your book, Bank on Yourself, you've got a secret to life changing your financial Correct. future. What exactly is the secret that people should know about? Well, it's a, it's a guaranteed way to grow your savings but without the risk and the ups and downs of the markets and it is based on a specially designed type of life insurance policy but this is one that you do not have to die to win and the beauty of it is that you can use the plan to get back every single penny you pay okay including in most or all of your finance charges for things like 
cars, vacations, business equipment, or even a college education, all while growing a nest egg you can predict and Chris, you got to jump See, in. See, I've been, I've been using some of Pamela's things here for a long, long time for some of our uh, wealthier clients, doctors who want to go ahead and finance and also protect their assets. But in, in regards to, you know, the credit card companies having too much power over us, you can only give up power. That's the one thing. I said people willingly give up power. They willingly enslave themselves to their debt, to their stuff. Your yes. stuff ends up owning you if you allow it to do so. Oh, yeah. And if people live within their own means and they buy things that they can afford and they don't stretch themselves to all this stuff and five plasma screens and all this stuff, mm -hmm. they're going to live much freer lives. And that's a problem that I encounter all the time. I get people coming to my office and they've got all this great stuff and nice watches and nice clothes and a nice house and a nice car and all this stuff and they've got nothing. You've got stuff. And that's a problem. We allow this to happen. All right. Thank you, both of you. We're out of time. Long. We've been talking all things financial with our money guy, Chris Markowski. Yes, he is back. The watchdog on Wall Street is back to answer some of your questions and make more dollars and cents for us. Welcome back, Chris. No problem. Okay, big story today, the credit card companies meeting with the president. What do you think about all this? You, you know, we discussed this a little bit in the last segment as well, and I, I think people get themselves into a lot of trouble. But that being said, you know, I do think that there needs to be some restrictions and how they go about marketing this and who they market it to. I mean, we are not allowing, uh, you know, in, in, a, in a student union at a college, we're not going to allow a Budweiser to start, you know, marketing beer to kids. Yet, we get all, as soon as you get in there, get your free, you know, Florida Gator t-shirt, just sign up, you know, get the credit card. Right. And unfortunately, these kids really don't understand the power of compounding. And it's something that, actually, it's on my website. I've got this thing called the Magic Compounding Calculator. Right. And it's, you know, Albert Einstein called it, you know, one of the man's greatest inventions because because what it can create for you. But it also works in the reverse. Yeah, in the reverse. And if you, you compile ridiculous amounts of debt and you allow all that interest to compound, it, it can you know smack you upside the head. And I think that's where it starts. And I think it gets down to education here in our society. Yeah. Um, about we, the risks of credit. Well, we don't, we're not teaching, yeah, we're not teaching kids about mortgages. We're not teaching kids about uh, compounding interest, credit, all these things at a young age. And these are life skills that are just as important as health class. Yeah. Uh, we're also talking this morning, too, about what's going on with the foreclosures and uh, some of the money that's being talked about again being thrown around some 75 billion dollars and uh, you know something that you and I have discussed before when we talk about people getting foreclosed on of course a tough situation but it's always said as though it's a life or death situation and these people will be homeless if they don't own their own homes that's not the case though yeah you guys have been great here on the program because we've addressed this a lot over the past year you know we've been talking a lot in regards to understanding what a home is uh, it's your home it's not a piggy bank uh, it's a place to live and if you consider your home a monthly bill and you get something that you can afford you're gonna be much better off uh, and if that includes rent that's yeah, fine. absolutely yeah. absolutely you buy something that you can afford it's like a food bill it's like a car bill it's a bill don't get overextended thank Bye, you Chris. Chris for more information on the watchdog on Wall Street head to our website